Howdy! My name is Kelly Johnson and I work with the PEER program at the College of Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Sciences here at Texas A&M University. And we've put together a series of training videos to help you with your educational endeavors. So today, one of our veterinarian technicians here at the vet school, Sheila Teague, is going to talk about the procedures that they go through to prepare a stallion for collection and also analyzing the semen in the lab. This is He's Pretty Smooth. He's one of our stallions here at Texas A&M. We're fortunate to have six stallions that live here full time and so that we can use them for teaching the students and doing research projects as well. Um, Smooth is a quarter horse stallion and he's a very nice guy as you can see. One of the things that we do when we're teasing stallions and working with them in the breeding barn is we actually run the chain through their mouth and that may seem a little severe to certain people but it really is the best point for that chain to be and, and it allows us to get some control of the stallion in case he gets a little excited but he's, you can see Smooth is a very nice, quiet stallion. We have our Ovex mare in the tease box. That means her ovaries have been removed. Um, so she's in heat 365 days a year. And so we're just gonna allow the stallion to tease up to her. You can see that she's exhibiting signs of, of heat to him and so that he knows that she's receptive to him. And a lot of their, their ability is based on how the mare reacts to them, but also on how the mare smells. So he's doing a flame and response right now where he's trapping the smell in his nose and is able to identify the mares that are in heat out in the wild that way. So our sequence of things would be that the stallion would tease up and then we would wash his penis to get rid of any smegma that may be present. And then we would collect him off the phantom, which is behind him right now. Um, the phantom is used and that helps pr protect the stallion from injury from a mare kicking him. It also protects the mares from stallions that are very um, vigorous in their breeding. We also have an ability to, to wrap it with um, saran wrap and that protects the stallion from passing diseases from one to the other so that they are, are not exposed to those diseases. This is our artificial vagina preparation room. We have two artificial vaginas that are located right here. They're two different models. This is known as the Missouri model. Um, you can see that it's made of rubber and it's very light and flexible and we'll go through preparing one of these for collection. This is the one that we use the most here in our laboratory. Um, also available is the model called the CSU model. It was developed at Colorado State University and is able to hold temperatures better in the very cold climate that's up there in Colorado. Um, one of the disadvantages in this is that the stallion will actually ejaculate in the middle of this AV and so the water temperature has to be set at the very right temperature for that so that we don't get any sperm damage from that. Um, the AV is then filled with water and as you can see it's kind of heavy and, and quite bulky. It's, it's very hard plastic um, and then the semen drips down here into the bag once it's collected. Um, those are used mostly in cold climates but we mostly stick to the Missouri models here at Texas A&M. So one of the things that we have to do is prepare our collection bottles. These are kept in an incubator that is set at 37 degrees Celsius. So it's the same temperature as the stallion's body temperature. And there's several components that go into the collection model. Um, these are actually baby bottle liners that we purchase and they are very clean and sterile. And so the, it keeps the collection bottle and the semen from having contact. So we put the baby bottle liner in the collection bottle. This is a nylon gel filter. It's actually used to collect the gel portion of the ejaculate. It's the portion that occurs at the end of the ejaculate and does not contain very many sperm but it's very thick and viscous and so it gets caught up in this gel filter and the sperm will actually drain down into the bag and then not affect the collection that we're doing. So this 
is placed at the bottom of the AV and then is cable tied on to make sure that it stays on during the collection process. The other component that we put in to the AV is actually lubrication so it helps the stallion penetrate the AV and it makes it a little bit more comfortable for them. So we use just a very small amount of lube, probably about a quarter size or so, and that's placed inside the AV, mostly at the top of the AV and then down into the AV a little bit. And then we use this sleeve to also close off the top of the AV. That keeps the lubricant from drying out and it also keeps any water from entering the AV. Water is spermicidal, so it will kill any sperm that it would con come in contact with. The water temperature is very important. Our water comes out of our faucet at 55 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius and that's about 140 degrees Fahrenheit so it's very warm um, but it's going into a cold AV so that's going to warm up the AV as well as provide some warmth for the stallion. Um, we would like the ending temperature to be around 45 degrees Celsius so that's very similar to what the body temperature of a stallion would be. So this AV is allowed to overfill with water and that then it's adjusted to the size of the stallion so that he can penetrate all the way down to the bottom of the AV. In the Missouri model AVs, the stallions actually ejaculate in this bottom portion here, which is not surrounded by water. So therefore, the water temperature in the jacket can be hotter for the stallion without expect affecting the sperm quality of the ejaculate. And then it drains down into the collection bottle. Here. This is the AV after it's been fully prepared and how we use it for collection. As you can see, we've applied a leather holder to be able to control the AV and, and hold it when the stallion is ejaculating into it. Um, we actually bring the AV in here and we'll actually drain out the water that is in the AV and that allows more of the semen to go down into the collection bottle. Um, water, as we said, is spermicidal, but the water is contained in a jacket inside the AV and does not come in contact with the this, this semen so we can allow that to drain out fully. Once we've collected semen, we'll also remove the collection bottle and remove the gel filter that contains the gel. Uh, the gel is found at the end of the ejaculate so it does not contain the sperm. And this, the sample is then collected into the baby bottle liner which holds the semen. Um, this bottle is just used as a holder for that liner and then we can take that out and utilize that in the laboratory collected the semen in the baby bottle liner, we'll actually pour it into a specimen cup and then we will assess the quality of the semen. Um, as you can see this is kind of yellow in appearance and looks like it's got some, you can't see through it or read through it so we call that opaque and so it contains a lot of sperm in there. Um, one of the things that we do to measure volume is we actually weigh the specimen. So we'll take an empty container, an empty specimen cup and then take out the weight of the specimen cup and then we'll place the specimen cup with the semen on the scale to get an accurate volume. So our volume today is 101 mils of, of semen here. The next thing that we'll do is we will actually get a concentration of this um, semen. So we'll take a small portion of it in a little tube We always want to keep the semen in the incubator. That keeps it at 37 degrees Celsius and also protects it from the fluorescent lights, which are very bad for it. So we'll take this small specimen here and we'll take it over to our machine called the nuclear counter. Um, this machine is a very accurate way of counting the sperm that is contained in the sample. And we have a detergent here that we use to dilute the semen into. And that deter detergent actually opens up the plasma membrane of the sperm and allows the propidium iodide, which is a DNA stain, to actually penetrate all the sperm. So we'll mix our sample well and pipette out 10 microliters of it. Then we'll wipe off any excess sperm that are located on the outside of the pipette tip. 
And then we'll add that sperm to our detergent. And mix that sample well together. This is the cassette and inside this cassette contains the propidium iodide, the dye that will stain the sperm. So we'll open up our container here and we'll actually just aspirate a small amount of the semen and the detergent up into the cassette and then place that in the machine. So it's going to analyze it for 30 seconds and then we'll give us a count on how many sperm are, are located in that, that sample. We can also take um, just regular phosphate buffered saline and use it as a dilutant and then only the sperm with damaged membranes will actually show up on the machine so we can get a viability percentage of how viable the sperm is. So as you can see it's now telling us that there were 76 million sperm per milliliter of that sample. And so we would take the 101 mils that we got on the scale and multiply that by 76 million sperm per mil and be able to give a total count of sperm that are located in that sample. The next thing that we would do, we would actually take some extender and dilute a small sample of, of sperm in that and then we would be able to analyze the motility of that sample. This machine is called a computer assisted sperm motility analyzer and it's got a small microscope that's located inside the box here and that shows up on the computer screen and through the computer software then we're able to visualize the modal sperm and the progressively modal sperm. So we can go through several fields here. And if we hit the start scan button, the computer will go through 45 frames and then it will be able to show us the playback of the sperm and how their tracks were moving. As you can see, this stallion has some circular tracks here, some sperm that are going in circles. That's quite common for sperm found from equine sources. Um, the mid piece does not attach quite in the middle of the sperm head and so we call that an abaxial presentation and that actually makes the sperm kind of travel in a, in a somewhat of a circle. Um, we know this stallion has very good fertility so the circular pattern of his sperm does not affect his fertility or his ability to produce foals. Um, some of the things that we'll see here is these little purple ones. Um, they will actually just barely moving so it's not going to consider them modal sperm. And then we've got these red dots here which are the non-modal sperm. If we look at the results here, it tells us that 77% of the sperm were moving in any shape, or fashion, or form. It also tells us that 36% of the sperm were moving in a straight, straight manner. We can also go in and look at each individual sperm track and get the numbers that were displayed for that one particular sperm and how it traveled on the, on the motility analyzer. Um, this is very important information because our breeding doses are based on progressively modal sperm. So we will send out to each client a billion progressively modal sperm to be used to breed their mare. If we're breeding mares on the farm, we'll actually send out, use 500 million progressively modal sperm. So we use this, this value here to determine how many total sperm we need to use in a mare or send off to a client to breed their mare with. Here we're looking at the paths of the sperm on the motility analyzer. And so the green is showing us that the sperm are traveling on this path. If I hold down, oops, hold down the button, you can actually see the sperm traveling along each little individual path. And that gives you an idea of how much lateral head movement we have. The heads may be moving back and forth at a vigorous manner. And also the general tract of each sperm. We've actually taken the sperm and diluted it down to a particular concentration to have the sperm kind of spread out. We don't want them overlapped on top of each other, so we kind of want them spread out so we can actually see each individual track that sperm is making. Um, the blue lines here that are found here and here are actually sperm that are called border crossers. They're the ones that are going either off the screen during the analysis or coming onto the screen during the analysis, so they're not 
taken into consideration because there's not a full picture available to the computer of those sperm. Um, so based on the numbers of this stallion, we had 101 mils of volume and we had 77 million sperm per, per mil of volume. And we have 36% of sperm that are moving progressively or in a straight line. So based on that, we could take those numbers and multiply them together and know that we can breed either three mares if we're sending out a billion progressively modal sperm to clients, or we can breed six mares here on the farm. We also, in our breeding shed, we have three stocks that are available. Um, we can place either a mare or stallion in the stock to be rectally, transrectally palpated. Um, the first two stocks are just normal stocks that we use on a regular basis. The third stock, as you can see, has been cut down and that one is specifically used for oocyte aspirations for mares. That's where we actually go in with a very long needle and aspirate the eggs out of the mare's ovaries. Then we take those eggs to a laboratory and let them mature for 24 to 30 hours and then they are injected with one single sperm and those eggs are then allowed to grow up to an embryo and then transferred into a recipient mare. So we also do a lot of breeding soundness exams on mares where we do biopsies of their uterus. That tells us how the uterus would be able to carry a foal to term. We also do cultures of their uterus to determine if there's any bacteria that may be growing in their uterus. And we also do cytologies that tells us how the cells are behaving in there. We can also look at their confirmation and, and tell if they've had injury from past foalings and also if they're going to be a good candidate to sustain a pregnancy to term and deliver a live foal. Well, we hope you enjoyed that video, and on behalf of the entire PEER team, we wish you the best of luck with your educational endeavors. Don't forget to check out our website at peer.tamu.edu for other training videos and free resources. Thanks again, and we hope to see you soon.